first qualifier event showed us who got off to a good start and who needs to get a move on if they want to qualify for Team Coach Lamar League in its third season. But this, block pushing, is the first time we've seen an event that has been in past seasons. Every team in the Cordula Marble League has done block pushing at least twice, so they have the past performances to analyze. They can go back and see what they did wrong to try to do right here. Who will push the blocks as far as possible? We're about to find out. Yellow Lotus in Group A topped the group after Event 1, and it's Celestial's Green Lotus and the Blue Lotus rounding out the top half. So in block pushing, in the qualifiers, every team just gets one run. Yellow Lotus and the Pumpkin Patch going at it now, but it's about their score, how it ranks across all of the runs in Group A. The Yellow Lotus gets to the blocks first, but I think Pumpkin Patch might have pushed it further. Look at this, Yellow Lotus coming a bit out of source. Oh, Yellow Lotus though, making the block as straight as possible, trying to straighten the block, and that will pay dividends because they beat the Pumpkin Patch by two millimeters only. I think the pumpkin match initially were further, but because the Yellow Lotus had that awareness, they were able to get more distance. Now, Celestials and the Mountain Climbers. Oh, and that was a terrible run for the Celestials up top. Mountain Climber is better, but I don't think by much. Look at the Celestials practically turning around the block as soon as they made contact with it, and it's just a 12.2. Mountain Climbers, only 14. This is a team that won block pushing in the B division last season, but they only slot into third right now. Now, Green Lotus and the Olive Orbs. Green Lotus, one of the best block pushing teams, podiuming in block pushing in both seasons of the team quarter of the Marble League. Olive Orbs, though, they are going to want a good push too, and they're going to get it, I think. Olive Orbs, decent push, but the Green Lotus, clear of them. But how does Green Lotus stack up to their Lotus rivals, the Yellow Lotus? It is not as good, because it's only good enough for third place, they don't even beat the pumpkin patch. So the olive orbs right behind them in fourth, still in the qualification zone if these two teams don't beat them. Now, blue lotus and the red lotus, these two rivals from the flower cup, who will get the edge over each other? It's gonna be the blue lotus that beat the red lotus, but now the question is, does it contend for the overall group victory? It looked a bit disjointed, and it is not, only fifth place with a 15.5. So the Blue Lotus only get 5th in the event, Red Lotus behind them in 6th. So the Yellow Lotus win the group once again in Group A, and they have gotten 2 wins in 2 qualifier events. Very well done to them. Green Lotus also slot up into 2nd place after Event 2, then it's the Blue Lotus, Celestials and Pumpkin Patch in a tie for the last qualifier spot. Now, we turn our sights to Group B with the Efficient Eggs and the Sinister Sprinters up top after Event 1. Efficient Eggs and the Valley Dashers in the first heat. Both of these teams qualified for last season, but weren't amazing at block pushing. Now, Efficient Eggs, oh, that was not good at all. Disjointed in one of the marbles, seemed to get out of the their area. That is so weird. Only 9.8 for the Efficient Eggs. That is one of the worst runs we have seen ever in block pushing. Valley Dashers, respectable 14 centimeters, but efficient eggs to go from first in the group in the first event to this oh my goodness now sinister sprinters and the aquamarines sinister sprinters they're hoping to better that and take the lead in the group but the sinister sprinters also suffer with not being able to keep the block straight whatsoever and it's just a 10.2 for them so they beat the efficient eggs aquamarines meanwhile 15 centimeters they go into first place well, the Sinister Sprinters, once again, the team higher in the group, is struggling. Now, Amber Animals and the Venomous Vipers, these two teams, were rivals from the B Division last year. They contended a lot with each other. Amber Animals also kind of struggled here. They got a Silver and Flint in the B Division. Venomous Vipers got, I think, fourth. So the Venomous Vipers, though, 15 centimeters, that ties the Aquamarines, but... Based on the marginal difference they're seeing, the Venomous Vipers are slightly ahead. But now, here comes the best team in block pushing, Treat Fleet and the Shadow Riders. The Shadow Riders, aside from, apart from one of their outings, they've had almost a fantastic run in block pushing in all of their events. But Shadow Riders here, they do beat the Treat Fleet, but not by much. 
<laughs> will it contend for the win in Group B? It will not. Just fourth place for the Shadow Riders with a 13.9, Treat Fleet 13.3 in fifth. So the Venomous Vipers get the win in Group B, Aquamarines in second, then it's the Valley Dashers, Sinister Sprinters and Fish Snakes in the bottom. And look at how close this group is. Venomous Vipers on 11, then six teams tied on nine points. So the, all of their positions are based on the count back, but they're all tied on nine points. That is crazy to think about. As you look at Group C, with the Hazelnuts topping the group after Event 1, they are going to be against the Golden Cheeses in the first heat. So who will push it further? Hazelnuts. They got the first podium of their careers in ball pushing in the B Division last season, and they will push it ahead of the Golden Cheeses here. Golden Cheese, another one of those teams that are really good at block pushing in the A Division both times. They've had at least a medal or very close to it, but they do not beat the Hazelnuts here. 15.5, that is a good push. Now, Icicles and the Bacon Brawlers. Both of these teams have not had a great history in block pushing, but they will try to push it further than the Hazelnuts, who had a lineup change, I might add. They mimicked their lineup from block pushing last time, and it worked out for them. The Icicles do push it further than the Bacon Brawlers. Well, Bacon Brawlers, not a good straight push at all. Icicles were much more straight, but didn't have enough strength to get it mu much further than 14.2 centimeters. They slot into second place right now. Now, Floundering Fish and the Rock Pools, two aquatic teams going against each other. Who will get the edge in block pushing here? Neither has had a great history once again in this event. And it's going to be the Rock Pools. That is a good push in the bottom lane. Flamming Fish. Oh. Just not able to get it off the walls. And they only get a 12.4. Rock Pools, though, with a 16 centimeter flat, they go into the lead with just one heat to go. Now, the Majestic Melons and the Bobble Squad. Majestic Melons have been decent in block pushing. Bobble Squad also got a silver in this event back in Season 1. Can any of them challenge the Rock Pools? Majestic Melons with their lineup change going back to a Season 1 lineup, but it's not going to work for them. They do not beat the Bobble Squad. Bobble Squad, that is a good push in the bottom lane, but it's only good enough for third place in the group. So the Bobble Squad, after losing out just barely for the Majestic Melons in swimming, they beat them here, but only slot into third. Rock Pools win the group in Group C in Block Pushing. Hazelnuts, though, in second. After winning the first event, they have had a great start once again. Like the Yellow Lotus, not quite two victories, but clearly at the top of the standings. Now, Yellow Lotus, v Venomous Vipers, and the Rock Pools. Congratulations to these three teams for topping their groups in Block Pushing. Next event will be another brand new event, the Gauntlet Run. This time a team event, and then after that, the Quadrilla Race to close out the qualifiers for Team Quadrilla Marble League in Season 3.